Hello, Monetization Nation. This is a Sunday episode, and I'm Nathan Gwilliam, your host. In today's episode, we're going to discuss how to determine and prioritize our good, better, and best choices. We all know the difference between a good choice and a bad choice. But while it may seem easy to identify and avoid the bad choices, how do we make the best choices? There aren't just good and bad choices. There are also better choices and best choices. In 2017, Dallin H. Oaks, a former university president and state Supreme Court justice and a religious leader, gave a sermon titled Good, Better, Best. In his sermon, he explained that as we make choices, we need to carefully reflect on the good, better, or best choices. Quote, as we consider various choices, we should remember that it is not enough that something is good. Other choices are better, and still others are best. Even though a particular choice is more costly, its far greater value may make it the best choice of all. Unquote, source is Oaks. As another way to explain it, with every extra hour or dollar that we have, there are a thousand good choices for how we could use that hour or dollar. Making a good choice is not enough for that limited hour or dollar. We should try to find the best choice. Oaks encourages us to be careful with how we spend our time. One way to determine how we spend our time is by setting priorities in our personal and business lives. I used to work for Azul Airlines with David Neeleman. While I was there, I learned the importance of setting priorities to help us make the best choices as a business. While I was there, David and his company often chose to focus on two specific KPIs, or key performance indicators. Those KPIs were the cost per seat flown and the revenue per seat flown. They felt that if they won those two KPIs, they would succeed as an airline as a result. Many of their decisions were based on optimizing those two KPIs. For example, the front of their company headquarters was purple. Even though their brand was named Azul, which translates to blue in Portuguese, the color of their building did not affect either of their KPIs. And so they kept the front of their building purple while I was there. Changing the color of their building was not one of their top priorities. While it may have been a good choice to spend their time repainting their building and aligning their brand with their color, um, it was a better choice to invest their limited time and resources in other places that would optimize their KPIs and better drive their growth. Quote, we have to forego some good things in order to choose others that are better or best. Unquote. And that was from Oaks. In our businesses, we can run a cost benefit analysis to give us the data to help us differentiate good choices from the better and best choices. In this process, we analyze the potential reward or benefit from a situation and compare it against the total cost. If the benefits outweigh the costs, it's a good choice. Whereas if the costs outweigh the benefits, it most likely isn't. Then we can look at the difference between the costs and benefits for each of our different options. And that will easily help us to differentiate the good choices from the better or best choices with our limited resources. Oakes shared a story from his childhood that helped teach him to understand the difference between a good choice and the best choice. When he was younger, he lived on a farm with his family. They rarely went to town, which meant their Christmas shopping was done in the Sears and Roebuck catalog. Quote, I spent hours poring over its pages, Oakes said. Something about the displays of merchandise in the catalog fixed itself in my mind. There were three degrees of quality, good, better, and and best. For example, some men's shoes were labeled good and they might cost $1.84, some better and they might cost $2.98, and some best and they might cost $3.45. From this experience, Oakes learned that sometimes determining the best choices requires weighing the costs and benefits. While the best shoes were more expensive, they were the better option because they were more durable and would last longer. Part of determining good choices from the best choices is by setting our priorities. As entrepreneurs, we have many different competing things for our time. It can be hard not to feel overwhelmed or let the best choices slip away because we're too focused on making good choices. By setting our priorities, we can make sure we spend our time in the best way possible. Oak said, quote, most of us have more things expected of us than we can possibly do. We face many choices about what we will do with our time and our resources. 
We should begin by recognizing the reality that just because something is good is not sufficient reason for doing it. The number of good things we can do far exceeds the time available to accomplish them. Some things are better than good, and these are the things that should command priority attention in our lives." Unquote. Most of the most successful people have learned that they have to say no to the vast majority of their good options so that they can focus on the best options. Choosing priorities is something many people struggle with, but it must be done if we want to make the most of our time. Here are five ways we can set priorities in our business. Number one, we can determine our main goals. What is the main goal of our business and what will it take to reach it? If we don't know what our goals are, how can we determine what needs to be done first? Think back to the example I gave of Azul. They determined their main KPIs and goals and then based their decisions, many of their decisions around those. Whatever our goals are, our priorities should align with them. For each goal we have, we need to break down the steps we'll take to achieve it. From there, choosing our top priorities will feel natural and easy. Every successful entrepreneur and business owner knows what their main goals are or should be. For example, with SpaceX, Elon Musk's main goal is to get humanity to Mars before he dies. He said, quote, unless we improve our rate of innovation dramatically, then there is no chance of a base on the moon or a city on Mars. This is my biggest concern, unquote, sourcefuturism.com. Musk identified the main issue standing between him and his goal and made it clear that innovation would be his top priority. Like Musk, we can evaluate what's standing in the way of our goals and prioritize fixing that. What will help us achieve our main goal? Put that at the top of your list. Number two, look at our time frame. What needs to be done sooner and what will take the most time to complete? This may be one of the easiest ways to determine our priorities. What has a due date? In school, this meant writing the essay due at the beginning of the week before starting the one due at the end of the week. However, it also meant considering the assignments that would take the most time. We may have had a shorter assignment due before the larger assignment, but started working on the larger assignment first because we knew it would require more of our time. The same principle applies to our business. What deadlines do we have? Do we have a project we need to complete for a client before a certain date? We should move the projects that have the soonest deadlines to the top of our priority list, and we should also move the projects that will take the most time to the top of our priority list. Number three is look at costs. How much does it cost to start a certain project, and do we have the funds for it? For example, if we want to develop a SaaS product but don't have the budget for it, our priority may be to increase the sales of our other products rather than focusing on the design of a new service. Our budget can be a great blueprint for determining what we need to prioritize. Number four, we need to look at our skills and do the easy stuff. Do we have the skills and abilities to complete a task ourselves? Or do we need to take the time to hire someone else to do it for us? Sometimes it helps to prioritize the easy stuff. It gets it out of the way and opens more of our time to focus on the bigger tasks without feeling overwhelmed by how much we need to get done or how many small tasks are on our priority list. If it is a task we can do ourselves, we also don't need to wait until we have the budget to pay someone else to do it for us. We can look at our to-do list and ask ourselves, quote, is there something here I can do within an hour, unquote. If there is, we can prioritize it to shorten our list. It will give us a sense of accomplishment and encourage us to keep going. Number five, do what we enjoy. What do we enjoy doing? Another thing to consider with our priorities is doing what we enjoy. No one wants to work on a project of a project that they don't enjoy doing. This can put a huge damper on our motivation. Instead, after we've prioritized the most important tasks, we can begin to prioritize what we will have fun doing. Why did we start a business in the first place? Do we find joy in being creative and designing products? Or do we find satisfaction in consulting with our clients? As we work on projects we enjoy, our productivity and efficiency will increase. As we set priorities in our business, we need to remember that we have priorities outside of the workplace too. This can include our faith, mental health, and families. Oaks said, quote, some of the most important choices concern family activities. Many breadwinners worry that their occupations leave too little time for their families. There is no easy formula for that contest of priorities. 
However, I have never known a man who looked back on his work life and said, I just didn't spend enough time with my job, unquote. Starting or running a business consumes a lot of our time, but we have to be careful we don't let the better and best choices in our personal lives get lost because we're too focused on making the best choices in our business. Here are some of my key takeaways from this episode. Number one, as we consider different choices, we should remember that it is not enough that something is good. We should strive to make as many choices as we can that are better and best. Number two, we need to say no to many of the good choices so we can focus on the better and best choices. Number three, with so many things competing for our attention in the workplace, it is smart to set priorities and focus on our tasks in priority order. Number four, to determine our priorities, we should look at our main goal, costs, timeframes, skills, complexity, and enjoyment. Number five, in our businesses, we can run a cost-benefit analysis and compare the results to help differentiate good choices from better and best choices. Number six, we need to also prioritize the better and best choices outside of the workplace, such as our faith, mental health, and families. Did this episode resonate with you? Then please subscribe to the free Monetization Nation e-magazine or subscribe on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, our Facebook group, or on your favorite podcast platform so you can receive future episodes of Monetization Nation. Thanks for joining me for this episode. I wish you success in focusing on choosing the best options for your business and life.